Hello and welcome to this demo of integrating AppSync with VMware vCenter. So AppSync is a software that has been released for quite some time now and it allows us to protect virtual machine, physical workloads and even do things like spin up test and dev environment based on the production workloads that AppSync will take a snapshot of and reposition them and repurpose them to our test and dev environment. However, one of the hidden magical features within AppSync is the ability to do everything that you can do from the AppSync GUI, but rather doing it from the AppSync GUI, do it from the vCenter GUI. Why are we doing it? Well, because we believe that if you are a vSphere administrator, you are very familiar with the vCenter UI as opposed to another product that you may not have the time to learn its UI and so on and so forth. So what you see here, that's the AppSync GUI that I've already connected to my vCenter server and I've already attached it to some extreme IO arrays as well, as you can see here. This is the one that we will be focusing on, that array, the 132, and here we have the vCenter interface. So on the vCenter interface, in order to integrate it with AppSync, what you need to do is to deploy the VSI plugin, which is an OVA VM that allows you to do many, many things outside of the scope of this demo, but in the context of AppSync, after you deploy the VSI plugin, what you need to do is basically connect the VSI plugin with AppSync, which is what I'm doing right now. Under the data protection system, you can see I've already added the AppSync server, and you can add another one if you want to just by pressing the plus button. Once that is done, what I can now go ahead and do is protect the data store. So the rationale behind AppSync is that you have three basic SLAs, bronze, gold, and silver. If we go back to the AppSync UI, just to show you what I mean, you can see that we have gold, silver, and bronze. Bronze means local protection using the Extreme IO revolutionary snapshots. Silver means a remote protection using recover point. And gold means remote protection using recover point and local protection using the Extreme IO snapshots. So for the purpose of this demo, we're going to use an existing uh, template, existing service level that I've already modified, which is the bronze, that I've modified it to the local snap 01. And now if we go back to the vCenter, let's take the data store that I want to protect, called vol01. From an extreme IRA, if I log into the XMS, you can see vol01, that's the volume that we are going to protect. So let's get back to the vCenter. If I now go back to vol01, under the EMC VSI tab, I can see that there are no snapshots that I took with AppSync. So let's right click the volume should I say and press the subscribe button and now it asks me do you want to subscribe that volume to a specific SLA that you've already created or do you want to also create a new one in our case I've already created one so I'm just going to press the subscribe button now the plugin will go back to the AppSync server and query all the specific service level that were already there and as you recall I've already created one called local snaps which is this one so let's press the next button I can also see the, some other parameters that are important, like for example, what's the schedule, how many copies do I need for the RPO, and so on and so forth. So let's press the next button. I get a summary screen, and then I can press the finish button. And now it will go ahead and actually subscribe that specific volume, which is reflected as this volume under the Extreme Array, with AppSync. So let's press the OK button, refresh this screen, Okay, we can now see that uh, it subscribed this specific data store to a specific service plan. However, because uh, it will wait for the next time, for the RPO specific time to actually start the backup, what we're going to do is force a backup right now. So I'm going to select this specific service level and press the run button. Yep. And what AppSync will now go ahead and do is run a snapshot on that volume. I can even do clever things around uh, whether I just want to do VMware-based snapshot plus crash level consistency snapshot of the array or only crash level consistency. In my case, I'm just going to do a crash level consistency. So what we can see here is that AppSync went ahead and actually created a tag for us. And inside of this tag, it actually created that specific snapshot volume. So it's all done. And now if I will refresh the screen, I can actually see the copy that I took from here. So upon restore, which we'll do in a second, if I have more than one point in time that I want to recover from, which is one of the highlights of the extreme IO snapshot, they require zero performance, zero capacity, I can actually go ahead and restore it from. 
I can also check the job history. I could view it from the AppSync UI, but again, I'm a vSphere administrator, so I want to see it from here. So if I press the event history, I can go ahead and see what happened with that specific snapshot. Was it taken successfully? Was there anything that got a warning from the vCenter and so on and so forth? So I can see that everything here was done as it should. So now I have a couple of options that I can go ahead and restore. I can either restore the entire data store in case of a complete volume failure, or let's say I just deleted the volume or the entire uh, VMs that are residing on it, or I can restore a VM, a specific one, or I can actually restore files from within the VM without installing an agent. For the sake of this part of the demo, I'm just going to restore a single VM. So first, let's see what VMs residing on that data store. So we can see VM01 and 02. Let's assume that I want to restore VM01 from an earlier backup. So I'm just going to right-click it and go to All EMC VSI Plugin Action, AppSync VM Restore. The VSI plugin will now go ahead and query the AppSync server. It will show me all the different copies that I have from that specific snapshot. I only took one, so I only have one to choose from. Pressing the next button. Now ask me, do you want to restore only these specific VMs or maybe potentially other VMs that residing on the data store or resided at some point in time? I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to restore only VM01. It will now go ahead and ask me, do you want to restore it to the same vCenter location, the same volume, or maybe to the same vCenter and the same data store, but to another volume. It can actually do it as well. So I'm just going to select original location. Now comes the clever part. It asks me what happened with the source VM. Do you want me to fail the restore in case of the source VM exists, like in our case? Create a new virtual machine, unregister the source virtual machine before the restore, delete from disk before performing restore, or delete from disk after performing restore. Delete from disk after performing restore is by far the safest option because it will go ahead and, and delete the source VM only once the restore has been successful. However, for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to tell you delete the disk before performing restore. So what AppSync will go ahead and do is actually delete VM01 and then restore the VM01 from a backup. So let's press the next button. It now asks me which ES6 server do you want to restore it uh, to. Another instant uh, in important feature is the ability to perform instant restore. Instant restore basically means that AppSync will just mount that snapshot onto the ES6 IOs that I told it to and power up the VM from there and then as I go in my convenient time I can storage remotion the VM from the snapshot volume. That is useful for traditional storage arrays where you don't have the time to start copy the data using storage remotion from one volume to another in real time and you just want to spin up the restore VM as quickly as you could. Although since that is not the case with Extreme IO, since we are doing an all-flush array and all the volumes benefit from the same performance, I'm not going to do an instant restore. And AppSync will actually position that snapshot volume and do storage remotion copy that specific VM onto the original source location. So that's what I'm going to do. Press the next button, I get a summary screen, and I press finish. Okay, the task has been submitted successfully. What will happen behind the scenes from a storage perspective is that AppSync will take a snapshot of the snapshot, will be tagged as a granular restore snapshot that you can see here. And from that volume that already you can see that it mounted it, so it speaks to the XMS, uh, it mounted it to two hosts. And we will see the volume being masked, a uh, position, a uh, re-signature from an ES6 perspective, which is what we're going to see right now and eventually it will copy the files of that specific VM. So here you can see the snapshot volume being registered and mapped and all of the good things that the XMS will do from storage perspective. And we now go ahead and restore the VM. The restore has been performed successfully, so what the AppSync will go ahead and do now is to delete the snapshot of the snapshot volume, unmap it and unmount it from the ES6 servers, and we can go back and do our work once that is done. There you go, the snapshot volume has been unmapped. If we go to the extreme IO array, I can see that the snapshot of the snapshot that AppSync used for the restore is not uh, there. The original snapshot is of course there, and it will be there until the time that it will be overwritten with the next RPO that we schedule through the VSI plugin talking to the AppSync server. So overall that's it, and now we can now with the VM, power it on, and everything is good. Next, we are going to perform a full data store restore. 
So what you can see here is the same volume that I used before to run a backup against AppSync. And here you can see different four different point in times snapshots that I took of that volume based on the 24 hours RPO. So what I'm going to do now is going to go to the related objects and delete all the VMs from the data store. There you go. So now we don't have any VM uh, running on this data store. And what I'm going to do now is again go back to the manage tab and run a restore operation that will actually restore the entire volume itself. So let's, let's do it. Let's select this point in time press the restore button. If I go to the XMS, I can see the actual volume itself. That's this one. And those are the four snapshots that AppSync took for me. They're also being tagged under AppSync 02. If we go back to the VSI, once I press the restore button, I have a couple of options. Those options are relevant for cases where there are still VMs on the source volume itself. So I get many questions that I can do and answer in related to those VMs. For example, do I want to power down those VMs and so on and so forth. This is of course irrelevant for us because I've already deleted all the VMs from the data store. And it also give me a question, what should I do if those VMs are not present at the start of the data store? So again, they are not present. So what we're gonna do is register and power them all up. So now let's press the next button, the summary screen. Press the finish button. And we can see the task has been submitted successfully. If you go to the vCenter, we can see that AppSync did all the steps for me. It refreshed the host uh, system files and so on and so forth. And now it's actually performing the restore itself of the volume. You can also sort it by status so we can see what steps are currently being taken. There we go, we do the restore. And as you can see, the restore has been submitted successfully and the VMs have been registered, added to the inventory and been powered on, which are those VMs that we can see here. So that's it. That's a volume restore, which is new to VSI 7 and its integration with AppSync. The last part that we're going to demonstrate today is a very cool feature of AppSync. It's the ability to perform a file level restore from within, let's say, the C drive of the VM without installing an agent on the VMs we're actually backing up. How do we do it? Well, we need to have something like a proxy server running Windows Server 2008 or 2012, and only on that server we will install the AppSync uh, agent. So how do you do it? It's very simple. Once I'm within the AppSync uh, UI, I go to setting and then servers, and then basically add Windows Server, and I specify the name of the server that I want to install the AppSync agent to. Press the start button. It's now pushing the installation file to the host. I can also install it locally, but that's a much more convenient uh, way to do it. Just push the agent to that server. Okay, the deployment is done. So let's press the close button. And here we can see that AppSync already registered that server and gather all sort of information around it. Come the fun. Here comes the fun stuff. So if I go to the VMO data center, that's basically what I can see from the VSI plugin, but now I'm, I'm showing you the AppSync UI. I can see the protected virtual machines. Any other VMs that are protected. So for example, we can go to VM01, and it will show me all of the drives of this specific VM. So now I can actually go ahead and as opposed to restore the entire VM, which we've already demonstrated for the VSI plugin, I can actually restore a file from within the VM VMDK disk file. So because this VM only has one drive, it shows me only one drive, so I can go ahead and press file. It will ask me which to copy to restore from. I have only one, so it already shows me only one copy to choose from. Which VMDK file I want to mount uh, to the host, which is how, do, how we do the restore itself. It asks me to which host do you want to restore it to. So that's the proxy server that uh, we just mentioned before. And summary screen and press the finish button. So if we now go ahead to the proxy server, what we will see very shortly is that AppSync will actually go ahead and mount the VMDK file of VM01 as an additional drive for proxy01. So I can actually go ahead and restore specific files and then copy them back to the original VM01 in case that assume I deleted the file from within, for example, the C drive. 
if I, if I right click the proxy server, I can see that the snap volume that contained the VMDK file of VM01 has already been added to that VM. And it's all been confirmed as been working. So now what I can actually go ahead and do is go back to the proxy server, open up disk management, and actually mount that specific volume that I want to restore file from and give it a drive letter. Actually, it's already showing me where it will be residing, so I don't need to do it. I can just go right back to the C drive, go to the AppSync mounts, VM01, and there you go. I can now go ahead and select files that I want to restore. Pretty awesome capability that you still require the AppSync UI to do it, but it's very useful in case you just want to restore files as opposed to the entire VM. Again, it's all for free. There's no agent involved on the VM that you want to backup, just the VM that you want to prefer the restore from, because it's acts as a proxy server between AppSync to the XMS UI. Here, by the way, we can see uh, the snapshot that was used to mount that uh, volume. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching and hope that was education.